Welcome everybody back to Pester Quest. My name is Brodimus. Last time we had Vriska, which was a lot of fun. I'm um, sorry again that this video is coming out on a Saturday. I just got back from my uh, my my business trip, as it were. Look like, at me mean, being an adult and everything, and coming back from New York expos and whatnot. It was a good trip. But anyway, we're here because well, because there's there's Homestuck trolls to befriend, <laughs> and we have. Uh, this one, begin the friendship process. Now, a little bit of a disclaimer, I have never done an Equius voice in my life, so this is going to be a real treat? Question mark? But let's get right in it, shall we? It's a clear, cool night. I'm excited. I'm, I'm, I, wait, wait, before we get right into it, I'm excited for this, because, man, not being able to do this on Wednesday was kind of a bummer for me. I gotta be in New York, which is pretty cool, but... I wanted to really get this up, get this done, get it, get at it. I missed it. I really did miss it. So now, I'm excited to be here. Even if Equius is one of my least favorite trolls. Not because he's not a good troll, just he never really stuck with me. Hmm. Anyway, it's a clear, cool night. And you're wandering around trying to decide whose hive you should crash at before the sun comes up. It's nice having so many options for places to stay. You've cultivated a decent community for yourself, and there is an ember of pride in your belly about it. Still, you find yourself feeling a little aimless. The last couple friends you made were pretty intense. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but you're vibing at a chiller frequency right now. There's still a while until it gets dangerously light out, so you sort of pop around, see what feels right, and just going around, hopping face to place, see, see, what, you know, see what sticks, just throw it at the wall, see what happens. It's kind of fun to test out the boundaries of your powers. You've used it to find friends, but you're really not sure how far it goes. You think tree, and you don't know how your magic brain decided which one to choose, but fuck if you aren't sitting on a highly, an extremely high branch a second later. You try it again with whatever concept comes to mind. You try it again with whatever concept comes to mind. Garden. Okay, so now we're just popping around Boldir's locations now? You try it again with whatever concept comes to mind. Cave. Oh, okay, so now we're going to, okay, so cave. Mall, and it all works. Oh, it's dry as mall. You don't remember ever having been to any of those specific places, but you feel a strange, prickly affinity for them each time your feet touch the ground. Those are all pretty general occasional nouns, though. You wonder if it works for things that are more abstract. Quickly, before you can talk yourself out of the naivete of it, you think, home. It still takes you a minute to open your eyes, even if you're after you feel your guts all back in the right place, because what if you wake up in a room that feels like yours? Or worse, and infinitely more likely, what if you don't? You breathe in and immediately cough wretchedly. Oh. So it did take us back to this little this little hidey how space, huh? You open your watery eyes, clinging to the hope that maybe you come from a land of dusty comforts where you always just breathe in layers of dust and it's fine. It's not fine. <laughs> the narrator, it is it was not fine. You've landed inside one of the spindliest, most precarious hunks of metal that's ever been bolted into the side of a cliff. It looks like some ancient outpost, not homey at all. Of course that wouldn't work. It was stupid to try. Defeat is bitter in your mouth. The feet are bitter. <laughs> low hanging fruit there. <laughs> There's a twisty part of you that wants to curl up on a particular piece of floor and take a nap. You can't work out how much of that urge is just you wanted to give in, so just in case, you don't surrender to it. Maybe you'll come back another time and sift through all the shit on the, sh on the shelves. But for now, you're not sure how structurally sound this thing is, and you can't take any more disappointment. So you try one more time to pop somewhere you haven't been before. What was the one guy's name that Gamesy mentioned? Oh yeah, Equius. Did Gamesy mention Equius? I don't remember that. Maybe he's chill. <laughs> Maybe he's chill. You think his name and zap away, imagine yourself leaving an edgy, despondent swirl of dust in your wake. Oh, he's gonna punch through a fucking... The posters. Oh no, the posters. Your magical zap calibration maybe isn't as off as you thought because you pop in on Equius as close as it is possible to get to the dude without landing directly on top of him. The astonishing unchillness of the situation is imminently apparent. He's mid-jump, mid-yell, mid-sweat, <laughs> and mid-swing of an outlandishly beefy arm toward you. You freeze frame like an anime protagonist analyzing their choices mid-battle. In your drawn-out split, split second of an observational window, you realize he's not aiming at you, but in the direction of whatever noisy whirring thing you happen to plop down in front of... Uh... Fuck? As soon as he sees you, his eyebrows shoot up above his busted-ass sunglasses, and his yell strangles itself into panic. His arm shudders as though he's trying, and failing, to alter its glorious face where trajectory <laughs> or fist-to-face -face interaction is about to increase greatly. <laughs> That's an old fucking comic from back in the day. I used to love that thing. 
you really do not want to get your face punched off your head, so you scream and zap just outside the high arch door on the far end of the room. Oh boy. You hear a deep, meaty thunk, followed by a groan, then a sharp metallic crunch. The whirring stops. Oh my god, is he dead? Is the other thing dead? Should you go check on him? You skitter away from the door and then back to it, unsure what to do. Uh oh. Oh, I forgot his fucking troll tag was Centaur's testicle. I. I. That, I blocked that out, apparently. Um. I don't know what voice to give Equius. He's kind of a fucking creep. No offense to anyone who loves Equius, but he's kind of a fucking creep. And, like, not the same sense that, like, Aridin or Zebra are creeps, but he's just kind of a fucking weirdo, right? Anyway. Was that? No, it can't have been. Bean. Hello? Show yourself this instant. Ah, oh, fuck. He does not sound happy. His words are a little garbled, too. Like some teeth just got knocked out by whoever's ass he was just kicking. You weigh your options. Chicken out or be brave. Chicken out. That seems like a terrible thing to do in this situation. You yeah, know, Eggers looks super strong and even more pissed. You really, really do not want to be next in line to get disemboweled. If friendship with this guy is really meant to be, maybe you can reconnect with Gamzee as an intermediary. That sounds like a normal and cool time. Panic grips you as his heavy footsteps approach the door. Forgetting you have super useful zap power specifically for use in time of sensitive panic situations, you turn and run. Fucking moron. You glance over your shoulder as you go and collide spectacularly with a brick wall. <laughs> it's Centaur Dad! Looking up from the brightly polished floor where you lay, and Is this the first Lucis we've seen of all these trolls, actually? No, we saw Spider Mom. We didn't see Crab Dad. We didn't see, um, Mother Grub Mom. Or just, just Mother Grub. We didn't see Seagoat Dad. We did see Spider. Okay, so this is the second one. We saw Spider Mom. Though not in sprite form, really. We always saw her in, like, background or, like, end screen form. So this is kind of interesting to see uh, Centaur Dad in uh, sprite form, I guess. Looking up from the brightly polished floor where you lay, inexplicably doused in milk and broken glass, you realize it wasn't a wall you hit. It's a glistening, part pseudo-humanoid, part horse, cow, beast person? Another godforsaken Lucis, maybe? You really aren't sure, but the fact that his top half looks kind of like a more like, uh, like a more dapper you, fills you with the most cursed mixture of fear and curio curiosity, curiosity, you felt thus far. He doesn't seem bothered by you at all, only anxiously trying to get by you. You try to stand up and Equius pummels you to the fucking floor, but you slip on the milk and eat shit just as Equius bursts through the door. They both tower over where you lay, flopping ineffectively in a burgeoning puddle of froth. God, is everyone in this house just made of muscle? You've had enough of this regular strength escape attempt bullshit. I'm sorry. You've had enough of this regular strength escape attempt shit. Bruised, humiliated, and covered in dairy, you zap on out of there. <laughs> covered in dairy. Humiliated! Oh, fucking rad. We got the quick banding. That's a really funny screen. I really like that. Equi is just beat to shit. Look at him. All right. Awesome. Now I just need to fuck it up again, but worse this time. <laughs> Someone said, someone said I could, like, just save at the different, like, option points. I can't, there's something satisfying to me about hitting the little arrows over here and just watching it all, I hit the mic, zap on by. If it bothers you guys, I can stop doing it, but there's just something really satisfying to me about that. Anyway, let's be brave! Oh, no, man. You know the game's seal of approval is maybe not the most credible, but this guy might be an okay dude. And it would be, it would definitely be your fault if he was hurting there. You should at least check on him, explain or something. You can zap away if it comes down to it. Yeah, you know what? We always got that little contingency plan in our back pocket. You do the polite thing this time and knock. He opens the door fast like he was just on the other side of it. You both jump. He collects himself and glares at you, arms crossed against his heaving chest, rivulets of blood. I hope I pronounced that right and sweat run together and pool in the divot above his weird alien clavicle, and a low, menacing sound rumbles through him. You can feel it in your teeth. Holy shit, he's terrifying. Explain yourself immediately. Y oh, <laughs> Equius, babe. No, none of that, man. You think you might shit your pants on the spot, but he gives you a quick up and down and rearranges re re his expression into a sort of false smile. It doesn't really feel any more welcoming, but with the blood dripping down his chin, but the fact that he's trying is maybe a good sign? You hold your fear- uh, you hold in your fear shit, just in case. Or, perhaps, come in and take a seat. He steps aside to beckon you through the door, then sort of freezes. 
uh, unless you should be the one instructing me, in which case it would behoove you to make that promptly apparent. Uh, probably apparent. I, I cannot work out how exactly to address you when you don't wear a cast symbol and you look like that. Which I am either very sorry for or quite ex about, depending on where the truth lies. Excited? Is that what that's supposed to be? Or, or quite excited about, depending on where the truth lies. Either way, I, I am beginning to perspire about it. So, out with it right now. Man, he's really struggling. The anger you felt radiating, radiating off him before is still there, but that doesn't seem to be all of what's driving him. It's like there are two competing forces inside him, one that wants to yell at you, and one that wants to get yelled at by you. You might conceptualize these forces as fierce animals, warring in a glorious and unwavering balance. Horses, perhaps? Anyway, you'll workshop that metaphor later. You tell him you know you look weird, but you promise you're cool. I'm cool, I'm chill, I'm the coolest man around. I'm the, I'm, I'm the shit, man. You know what? Uh, you know a friend of his? I know a buddy of yours. At the mention of Gamzee, the corner of his lip curls up into something complicated. So you change course real fast in case. Hey, Carcat! Does he know Carcat? What a guy, that Carcat! Always yelling. The loud one? Yeah. Were ears still ringing? He eyes you warily, or you think he probably does? With his eyes hidden behind his shades, you can't be sure, but he's being very still. Sweat and blood are still just fucking running down his face, and he's not even acknowledging it. You laugh nervously. Oh man. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. You both continue to stand there, waiting for the other to make a move. It would be super helpful if someone was assertive around here. Luckily, some kind of cow centaur man, his Lucis, you assume, breaks the awkward doorway, sta uh, doorway stalemate by silently trotting up and handing Equus a desperately needed towel. <laughs> he then offers you both some frosty glasses of milk. Something deep inside you feels a swell of warm recognition for the ritualistic moment of a friend's parent bringing you snacks, so you down that thick shit in one go. Don't ever describe milk as thick shit. <laughs> Don't do that ever again. As someone who has issues with uh, with dairy products, this is just uncomfortable for me in general. I'm gonna get gassy later. The loses his mustache, flutters in appreciation, and after a nod between him and Equius, he leaves as quietly as he came. I'm gonna leave that one alone. I see you are an aficionado of the sweetest of nectars. This speaks to the likelihood of your nobility, which is reassuring. I may be able to overlook the circumstances of our meeting, then, if you can provide strong evidence, of course. Tell me, are you also a hoofbeast art enthusiast? Sure. Yeah. Sure, buddy. Their pectoral muscles, the way they glisten in the Alturian moonlight. He beckons you inside the room, and as you follow, you tell him you're not really sure what that means, but probably sure. You're a fan of a lot of... Things. Oh. Oh. Haha, <laughs> wow, okay, so that's what that means. Cool. Yeah, you know what, whatever, fuck it. You feel like you learned once that anything can be art if it feels right. <laughs> Call back to Karen, that's awesome. So, Ark and I'm so excited that Karen was pretty heavily uh, shown in the High Swap 2 trailer, which. Uh, okay. So, Ark can definitely be the uh, well muscled horsemen on the walls of this here living space that we are currently standing in and totally not weirded out by this. <laughs> I just love how just extravagant a lot of these things are. It's just, I love it. Oh, as, as like, it's like, ooh, uh, I appreciate that you really committed to the bit, but ooh, ah. Uh, Equius rumbles in agreement. <laughs> of course he does. And gestures toward a chair. It's one of those cool red and black gamer themed chairs with embedded speakers. There's a lot of that kind of decorating motif in here, which is a little at odds with the high ceilings and engraved doorways and general blue blood old money architecture. Was that going to be like a huge gamer? I don't really remember that. Oh, yeah, ha, and there are broken bots and robot parts all over the goddamn fucking place. Not a neat little, not, uh, not a neat little stack or connected to other robot parts to create whole robots, just an absolute wasteland of obliter obliterated robo corpses. Like, they all were torn limb from limb and then just scooted off toward the wall. Because that guy is a super fucking, like, he's a super good, like, robotics and building shit. Because he built, he built Friska's arm. Because, I mean, Darklear built, uh, Mindfang's. Uh, arm also? I don't remember. It's been so fucking long. A fair few of them are spattered in blood too. Dried. It looks almost black, but the fresh stuff on the fists uh, of one in pieces at your feet is bright indigo. On the one hand, it is absolutely a relief to see that it's all metal and not fresh, uh, our flesh body parts scattering the floor, but also it's still, you know, not, not fucked up looking. <laughs> 
Your smile probably has too many teeth in it to seem normal, but Echoes returns it in kind and leans what he probably thinks casually <laughs> against the edge of his desk. It creaks under his weight. Jesus, he could just end you in half a second, couldn't he? <laughs> I love the what he probably thinks is casually. It's like, so, what are you doing here? <laughs> You claim we have m mutual. <sighs> mutual. Mutual acquaintances. So demonstrate it. He nods toward the screen on his de of his desktop. It's a desktop, isn't it? Where he has Trillian open. Oh, fuck. Okay. You guess you can just click on someone and ask them to prove it? He seems to know both Carcat and Gamzee, and between the two, you know who's most likely to be online and ready to pester and be pestered at all times, so you click his screen name and start typing. <laughs> yep, we start typing Carcat. Uh, hey Carcat, I hope you're having a good day, I just had a quick favor to ask you. Wait, what? Oh, also, I miss you. What the fuck? What happened to you? Where's your horrifying quirk? How am I supposed to saddle up for some truly nauseating conversation if I don't have a not not veiled little bold reference greeting me at the beginning of every one of your excruciating messages? Are you sick? Like, in a new way? Oh, right, Jesus, you're logged in as Equius. Your fool ass just started typing like you had your own account for some reason. You blame it on the nerves and get to clarify. Oh, ha, sorry, this is your new friend. After I dropped you off yesterday, I wandered around for a while, and now I'm hanging out with Equius. I'm using his computer. This is really like the first dialogue that we see from MSPA Reader. Because, like, we got the whole joke with Dave about how, like, you just say shit out loud sometimes. <laughs> I like that the fucking phone in the background looks like a really disgruntled face. <laughs> anyway, but this is, like, the first dialogue dialogue we see from the MSPA Reader, which is kind of interesting. I don't know if it means anything, but it's kind of interesting nonetheless. Anyway, I'm using his computer. Oh. My pusher almost fucking gave on the spot. I don't think he trusts me. Can you vouch for me? Hold on, let me just bask in the concept of the two of you hanging out. This is a mental masterpiece, a tableau of awkward fucking splendor. I legitimately do not even know what sort of short-circuiting must be happening in his brain to try and make sense of you. Please don't tell me a single fucking thing about it later. Okay, phew, I'm done now. Is he watching? Equius leans over your... Oh, my mouth made a weird noise there. Equius leans over your shoulder and tucks his hair behind his ear so it doesn't get in the way of his typing. It's a bow and arrow. Any resemblance otherwise is only a pleasant... Pleasant. Pleasant, he says. Coincidence. And yes, I am watching. Okay, whatever. Listen up, you milk log chum squelcher. <laughs> Whew! This little guy right there, the one you're probably dripping sweat all over, that's one of the realest friends you will ever hope to make. Sure, they'll send your life careening horrendously off course, but it will absolutely be worth it for the level of dedication they bring to the table. Don't even bother with the blood color horse shit with this one, since they're, uh, the only one of their species. Just roll with it for once in your, in your wretched life. Don't fuck this one up, Zahak. They're an abomination they wouldn't know what a boundary was if it uh, took up residence in their grease chute. But well, you do have those things in common, so in this case, that's a good thing. <coughs> Equius inhales... I apologize. The car cat voice really just fucking... A uh, really rich a thor as a throat ripper. Equius inhales sharply, and you wonder what car cat meant by that. About Equius, you mean. Sure, you're an, an inexplicable being, neither Earthling nor Alternian, but with weird, itchy memories about having lived on both planets. But he doesn't seem out of the normal range of fucked up. Considering troll standards. <laughs> In fact, how about this? That is sufficient. Goodbye. He minimizes the window and steps back, somehow sweatier than he was before. He taps the towel gingerly to his forehead. So, we have now been properly introduced. I didn't even notice that he didn't put the bow and arrow in, the, uh, in his dialogue box. I guess, to be fair, you can't really vocalize bow and arrow. <laughs> I mean, I guess you could... <laughs> <laughs> okay then! You definitely thought he was going to be more thorough than that. He does seem a little shaken up, so maybe you should be thankful that the, that conversation got cut short before we could really dig too deep into your lore and get judgmental about it. I... I do not know the standard method of communication with your species. You will take the lead here and I will surely become clear on how I should proceed. Yes, that sounds extremely feasible. You will now begin the friendship process. I command it. Oh, sure, you got this, buddy. Sure, yeah, whatever, man. Uh, how exactly do you got this? Oh, boy, show off your... Uh, so we're both freaks, huh? Boy, these are real nebulous, ain't they? Hmm. All right, so let's see. Let's analyze this. So I show off my cool powers. Does that is that asserting dominance? Is that like T-posing on Equius? Is that going to really just be like, I'm better than you? Obey me? Lick my boot? Or no milk? <laughs> Boy, I'm sad those words came out of my mouth. 
Or so are both freaks, huh? Equius doesn't like being... Oh, well, no, he does. <laughs> He's got this weird thing about both having superiority, but also getting turned on by being pushed around, <laughs> which I don't want that to happen. But how do these turn bad? If I show off my cool powers, we might end up somewhere shitty. And... I mean, uh, the worst case, one or both of us end up dead. So we're both freaks, huh? I, I feel like Equius doesn't think he's a freak. I think Equius really just wants, like, he thinks he he has his place in the Hema Spectrum, but he, boy, is he just got some weird fetish shit. Nothing, you know, people can have their fetish, that's whatever, it's not gonna hurt anybody, but. Oh, man. I'm gonna fuck this up and get the right ending, ain't he? Anyway, I feel like showing off my cool powers is the worst way off this, because that's that's less direct to him. I know I said that last time, and I fucked up briskas, but I fuck it. We're gonna say show off your cool powers. You you went through on my mental train with me, and I didn't get anywhere. Uh, it just careened off the edge, fell into a cliff, and exploded like a Looney Tunes cartoon. So we're gonna go show off your cool powers. Great, you can do that. Making friendship happen is like the one skill you actually have. From what you recall, you have a 100% success rate at success, not success rate, success rate at it too. So that's, that, this, this budding rapport is safe in your hands. Sure, that, this sounds like a good way to start the bad ending. Since first sentence, first dialogue box in. Excellent. Whew, you really weren't sure you'd be down for this. It really seemed like he might be coming to kill you when you heard him stomping toward the door earlier. Kill you? I would never... He cuts himself off as though he didn't intend to admit he didn't have it in him to murder you and clears his throat. That's a fair- okay, okay, that's an interesting- that's, that, that is the one interesting thing about Equius, he has the dichotomy and the juxtaposition of his role in the blood cast in the Hemospectrum, but also him actually being not that bad of a dude, but also being a f just like, having- just being a freak, being a weirdo. At first I thought you might be Arthur, my looses. Arthur? Is Arthur the only one that has a real name? It's ridiculous looking back, though you do share a sort of globular pated resemblance. Resemblance? <laughs> That's that word, resemblance. How did you come to entangle yourself in my brawl, only to immediately escape? Are you abnormally fast? I admit that particular method of being strong had not occurred to me, but I am intrigued. I, too, like to test the limits of my physical capability. Oh, no, you can just zap places. I just... It's a kind of strength, maybe. If you want to define a superpower that way, you show off a bit since you know Equius likes demonstrations. You tell him about how all you have to do is think of the place or person you want to visit and pop. You bop to the top of, uh, of a pile of robot parts. <laughs> you bop to the top of a pile of robot parts in the back in front of him on the floor. It's like that, except, you know, anywhere and any time, technically. I see. That is exceptional. He sort of just starts quaking gently where he stands. <laughs> <laughs> he rubs his neck with his towel, but he's not really even sweating any more than he had been already. It's as though in his excitement, he forgot to sweat and just dabbed by force of habit? Is that a thing? Why are you even noticing this shit? Is it possible to bring along a pillion rider? What, like zap, uh, like zap a buddy with you? In answer, you extend an elbow for him to grab. His whole body is vibrating by this point. He reaches his hand out, but stops just before he touches you, like you might shock him. It's okay, it won't hurt you, say. You say, come on. His fingers twitch just above your elbow, and his mouth purses in distrust. You're not sure exactly what he's worried about, since you're extremely undangerous, but you let him have a moment to work through whatever he's nervous about. He's gonna break my fucking arm is what he's gonna do. He takes a steadying breath. It's a little unsettling to see his face relax, even briefly, in his soft, calm lines. Flipped palm up, his hand slowly cradles your forearm from below. He nods, a sharp, determined movement, and starts telling you what to do again. You will take me with you. Her name is Nebula. Do you require any more information, or will that be sufficient? That ought to do it! You haven't heard of her, you don't think, but you feel an immediate surge of excitement about this little jaunt. It's probably mostly just a friendship a thirst talking. <laughs> Boy, I, I am thirsty for it. But you can't help but feel like this is a connection that is supposed to be made, like it's something that matters. You zap away. The pleasant little cosmic slip and slide feeling when you zap around is jolted like you got yanked off the ride with a fish hook to your guts. You land back exactly where you started. That did not work. Did you mislead me? No, this should work. You're, you're not even high this time. <laughs> as impressive as the strength of your power is, perhaps you need to apply more attention to the more intricate details involved. She is an olive but very short and shamefully unkempt. This information will help. You hope so? He, uh, 
It's starting to look pretty tense. Even with the fawn til uh, lilt in his voice, he talks about his messy friend. Aw, that's cute. You give it another whirl, and then you feel it. That same weighty glare on the back of your neck telling you you don't belong. Oh! Fuck, you got zap blocked again! Okay. The T-posing man is back. You will try again. Each word is ground out one at a time between his clenched teeth. Blood trickles through the cracks in his bite and out the corner of his lips. You really don't think this, it is going to work, but Equus looks like he's a second away from losing his shit, so reluctantly you comply. Quit... Quit fucking trying to skip ahead, it's not going to work. Okay. Okay. I still think that's Dirk. I still think that's Dirk. As you hurtle through space time toward Equius' floor, you start to wonder if this is just gonna be what happens now when you try and make friends. You accept this truth into your heart as you face as your face accepts the impending wood planks. Equius lands on his feet a little ways away from you, his hands balled into fists, bellowing with impotent rage. He's not even saying words, just unleashing an agonized guttural wail. He punches an already dead robot torso, leaning against a bookshelf. In punctuation, he kicks his decapitated head, which explodes in a shower of bolts and sparks. As the dust clears, you see him dutifully wiping himself down with a towel, breathing hard. He seems to have worked his anger out, because he walks with purposeful grace, as though he'd l he learned it in Cotillion, and sits next to where you're still sort of laying on the floor. You're both silent for a beat. Equius tugs at a lock of his hair, anxiously wrapping it around his finger, into uh, his hands fall in his- Uh, boy, howdy! His hands fall to his lap. I apologize for that display. The disappointment emotion is not my favorite. The disappointment emotion. I feel better now, however. My Moira lives very far away, so our paths have never been able to cross. Whatever force is blocking us seems to wield significant narrative power, so I will respect its whims as above mine in status. That's a weird thing to say. For now. Ha! You know it happens. You're no stranger to the ups and downs of friendship. The trick is to know when to keep trying and when to fall back, no matter how futile it seems or it feels or how alone you are. Your moral your morale is impressive, considering your circumstances. That's probably mostly a compliment. <laughs> You're not really sure. Your circumstances definitely feel like they could be worse. You are very sure of yourself. How do you manage this when you are the only one of your kind? Without a society to tell you how to act or feel, how do you know if you are living in the correct way? How do you know where you belong? Or if you belong? Fucking ouch. The desire to belong is a yawning wound in your guts, one that never seems to heal. You try to not let this rip too many stitches out of it. You never feel totally secure, you say. There's always fear, always doubt, always pain. But you find people in unlikely places. Make community when and where you can. The shit, you have belongings at, what, like eight people's houses now? It's not the same as having your own spot, but it's always something. You started off on the defensive, but you realize it's true. So, really, you figure you're still de defining yourself by your relationships to other people, but that can come from a good place, and not just a twisted and forced one. You get wanting to know you're doing something right, unlocking your own mentally devised set of achievements for that sweet dopamine rush. But leaning on a fucked up social system for direction and validation doesn't really help them, and it definitely isn't helping any many others. You don't need that to figure yourself out. His brows furrow, and you can almost hear a couple of the 46, or 4,672 ridged barriers in his brain creaking open. It's not just other people, you think. You find strength- oh, sorry, strength! Is that right? In yourself, or in your own self, too. You've met a lot of people and learned a lot of ways to be, but you're still working on what that means for you. No, it is not right, but I appreciate the attempt. This type of understanding has not come easy to me, but I believe I am following. In my case, I have striven to locate and retool the edge of my own uh, ability. Physical prowess is a relatively typical indigo trait, but I am abnormally strong. I have worked to hone it in an attempt to make sense of myself and why I am like this. Reigning in an aberrant trait and defining myself by it. He gestures to the god-awful robot mess, then flexes his hand. The blood has coagulated since you two started talking. He stares at it. This way of thinking may not always be a good thing, however. Certain habits are difficult to break. Though there are loopholes in every rule, I often lose track of which regulations I actually enjoy following and which I just do not know how to disregard. At least with this hobby, all the stakes are under my control with no chance of others getting hurt. Unless they haphazardly zap in between your fight looking for friendship, that is. His smile is his brawl. I got the good ending, didn't I? Damn it. Oh, look at this sweet boy. <laughs> his smile is as broken and rigid as it was the first time, but it feels different, backed by the rough warmth of his laugh. <laughs> yes, do not do that again. 
Next time you will zap in front of the door and Arthur will let you in. Next time, you think, and you smile back. <sighs> Excellent victory. Well, now let's ruin it. What a sweet ending to the good one. That was nice. Now to fucking <laughs> screw it all up again. <laughs> Shit. Be brave. All right, now what do we gotta do? We're both freaks, huh? How about that, eh? All right, there we go. So you just like to go for it. Sometimes leaping into what could potentially be a super sensitive topic for someone ends up being the key ingredient in a friendship pie. You can see it now, Equi is crying. Thankfully you are here to talk about whatever this unspeakable commonality you share is. You wiping his tears with his already pretty soaked towel. You shake yourself out of your daydream and drop this sweet load of questions right in his lap. Holy shit, you can't wait till this works. Excuse you. Okay, so this was pretty- I did see this coming! Point it out! I did see this coming, that he would get offended at me saying this. Speak for yourself, my standing is unblemished. Carcat is only comparing us in that way to further the ruse that he has removed from that particular category. It is a delicate social st dance. Oh, okay. You're not really sure Carcat sees it that way, but hey, whatever works for them. Anyway, you know he was just yelling a lot about some uh, something that's not a big deal, as is his manner of showing affection. But you just thought he meant, like, the horn thing? The horn thing? Oh shit, you're sorry. You don't know what uh, things are and aren't cullable around here, you know? It's almost like it's all entirely arbitrary and at the whims of whoever's in charge or something. <laughs> you like the look, personally, but you haven't made friends with someone with a broken one before, so you're not sure how common it is. It is relatively uncommon. They are exceptionally sturdy, so it takes something very strong to break them. He looks like it might be a... Uh, he might be about to tell you the story, but somehow you keep not learning the lesson where you should just chill and experience something instead of leap to try to figure it out. Boy, that was a sentence that I just completely lost track of there. He looks like he might be about to tell you the story, but somehow you keep not learning the lesson where you j should just chill and experience something instead of leap to try to figure it out before it happens. All right, I got there. Got it figured it out. So, fueled by enthusiasm for your newest spur-of-the-moment decision, you stopped listening to his lecture on troll biology and focused instead on zapping to the moment his horn broke. Troll biology is probably super uninteresting anyway, and you'll come right back here after, and he'll be able to contribute more to the conversation. You pop into... F oh boy. Familiar nothingness. But instead of appearing at a point in Equus' past, you feel yourself split. It's like looking at a magic eye puzzle, but with your whole body. You try to concentrate to align the segments into a whole, but it's too late. You think for a second it might be a cool new power, but it doesn't feel that different than before, only just... Triple. It's like there's narrative precedent for this moment existing in more than one plane of truth. Unable to do anything else but sit and sit there in space, contemplating this paradox, you watch. He looks a little younger, but not much. He's beating the shit out of a robot, but it's not the same as it was when you saw it before, however briefly. Then his movements had been smooth, even in their rage, like he wasn't afraid until you showed up. Here in this weird half-present space, his movements are erratic. He swings wildly, unthinkingly, like there is nothing left inside him but one last flicker of fury. His teeth are gritted. Uh, against tears, and he just looks so tired. You want to pull him back to make him rest. You see him reach the same conclusion, but not at all how you meant it. He just stops. The robot does not. You feel him close his eyes. At the same moment, you see another snapshot of time, much further back. There's a little grub wobbling its way up a stalag uh, stalagmite in a cave. It's definitely a precarious place, but it still somehow feels safe to you for some reason. Safe, but also like super violent. Who knows, there's a lot of going on right now. He crawls to the top and roars a baby clicking roar, eyeing a taller cave precipice. You see his little behind wiggle as he moves to jump. Over top of that, there's another Equus, looking about the same as he does now, just plus one horn, out for a stroll in the moonlight. This one is about to cross the street when a majestic herd of hoofbeats crests a faraway hill. He stops, transfixed, as the animals gallop across the plain. He doesn't, he doesn't hear the approaching scuttle buggy. You watch all of this from your floating void standpoint, unable to stop it. The arcs of their f falls align in cosmic uh, synchrony, hair fanned out like a banner of defeat. The echo of the crack the horns make as they shatter reverberates in your teeth. You yell as all three Equiuses hit their respective grounds. You can't help it. You started to care about this guy a little bit. As the sound leaves you, all three of them turn their injured heads to look at you in unison, and you freeze. Shit, that's probably not supposed to happen, right? You were just watching, not changing anything. You barely know what you're doing, though, so you can never be sure. You zap immediately back to the present, winded and dizzy. You feel deeply, suddenly corporeal, like you do when you step off a boat onto the shore, but with each atom of your body separately and all at once. Echo is standing exactly where he was when you left, totally unchanged, still yammering about anatomy. Whew, good to know nothing got fucked up in the future after you... 
Wait, you were there. He pauses, shaking his head to clear, uh, clear it as his memories realign. I don't know how I didn't remember. I accepted your offer of friendship, and you repay me with this tomfoolery. You knew how it happened all this time, and yet you played ignorant, jockeying for position as someone I trust only to play me for a fool. No, you see, you didn't before. It wasn't until after you went back uh, that this became the way things went. See, the way time travel works is... Do not explain time travel to me. What do you take me for? You're still reeling a bit from seeing him so vulnerable. By varying definitions of vulnerable, you guess, but still... This got weird. <laughs> you know you got this information from an unfair source, but now that you have it, you don't feel right just leaving. There's more to Equius than you'd originally thought, and you can feel the chance to learn more about him slipping away. I don't know what it is you want from me, but you will not receive it. Whatever connection you feel to him in this moment, he clearly does not return it, and... Ah, oh shit, he's starting to get pissed. Sweat begins to beat at his temple. Your brain, scrambling to grasp a hold of any thought that isn't your abject friendship failure, latches onto the realization that, sweat and all, his hair somehow still looks really good. <laughs> Would now be a good time to ask him about what products he... I don't think this alliance is going to work out. You will leave. I must get back to my business. Your heart sinks as he turns his back to you, presses a button on the back of a robot's neck, and rolls his shoulders. Goodbye. Aww. <laughs> Shunned. <laughs> Boy, that was interesting. That was really interesting. Hmm. All right. Equus builds a radius robot body, doesn't he? Right? Does he do that? Shit. I don't remember anything about Equus. What is wrong with me? Anyway, that's it for today's episode, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, make sure you click the like button down below. Subscribe so you can keep up with my stuff. New video every Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern time. We're going to go back to the regular schedule next week. So be there. I mean, I'd say be square, but you know... That's just mean. <laughs> Comment! Let me know what you guys think about this. Um, that actually changed my focus, uh, my opinion on Equius. That was a, a really nice part. I still think he's a bit of a weirdo, but I feel like that's kind of his whole shtick. But that was really sweet. I really liked that. I really liked that good ending. That was really nice. Um, and share this with your friends. That's how we build the community. It helps the channel grow. And you know what? If you have people who are on the fence about Equius, show them this. Maybe this will change their mind as it had with me. Um, but anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I hope to see you next week for Terezi. Later!